What's going on guys, Way From Revolution here with Jeremiah Chan. How are you, sir? I'm good, Way. How are you? Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you so much for the Likewise. help on the, the launch of the Parmigiani Fleuriton to PF. I, it was an incredible response from a watch fan. Yeah, thank thank you. you guys so much for much the, much, your support. Much appreciated, guys. So, you know, this is an unusual video, but an important video. And we want to talk about something that's super topical, and it's about basically what's going on right now, watch theft. It's going crazy in every major capital city, especially in Europe. I mean, you kind of live in fear of getting jacked for your watch, right? And I want to talk about that situation and maybe one solution that we have, which is our pick for the top five watches to wear this summer and not get robbed, right? We've heard so many stories. I've heard stories of um, just snatch theft in Geneva, even in Geneva itself. Uh, someone just ripped a Patek Philippe world timer off someone's wrist. Uh, tragically, in London, I think in 2021, there was a murder of a young man, uh, Mohammed Al uh, Aremi, who is the son of an uh, Omani property developer, and he got stabbed to death and got robbed of his 37,000 pound Patek. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. You know, from a personal perspective, one of my best friends uh, was coming out of Mark's Club um, in Berkeley Square. So it's in a really nice neighborhood in London, in Mayfair. Uh, and he got, you know, jacked for his, his Rolex, got grabbed and thrown to the ground by these two guys. Incredibly enough, um, security was not there at the time. So, you know, I kind of assume it was an inside job. Mm -hmm. And that's something to understand also, you know, I mean, it's like when you go to the like Paris or to London or most of the capital cities in Europe, you kind of live under this prevailing sense of like anxiety and fear, right? And it's not just when you're walking around the streets or, you know, it's also when you're having a meal. Like a lot of times the wait staff inside the restaurant are checking you out. And if you're wearing the, you know, any of the usual suspects, like mm. uh, any Rolex, especially Daytona. Like the one you're wearing. Yeah, I mean, I, I showed, I brought this as an example of uh, if you're wearing, a, you know, a Nautilus, if you're wearing a Royal Oak, if you're wearing any Richard Mille, you're basically setting yourself up to be a target. Right? Exactly. And, and so this is, the reason I'm wearing this watch today is like, you know, I live in Singapore, very thankfully, and it is an incredibly safe place, right? I mean, we so much so that we sometimes become seduced by um, the, the safety of the country. Yeah, we're completely insulated from what's happening in Europe, and we, I think we become completely and sometimes we forget when we travel to these places, right, that we've got to be careful. Which is exactly why it's also Singaporeans who get robbed first, you know. And <laughs> so I would say the first line of defense for this is basically this, right? So if you're planning to go on your trip this summer to any of the beautiful and bucolic destinations, whether it's Venice or to the City of Light Paris or to London or to Barcelona or to you know, you know, even beautiful gourmet destinations like San Sebastian, I mean, the first thing you should do is this. Look at yourself in the mirror, look at the watch that you're wearing on your wrist and the watch that you're perhaps thinking about bringing to Europe. And if it's something like this, just reconcile yourself to the fact that you should not bring it, right? Don't because do it. Just, just don't, don't do, do it. it. It's not worth it. Like I've done it and like I've worn like my like a Rolex on the first day and you just feel this like impending sense of doom and dread, right? So follow me. What the first thing you should do is before you leave for your trip on Europe is take your Daytona or your, you know, Nautilus or your Royal like off your wrist and put it on the watch stand and leave it in Singapore or leave it in your hometown or leave it in your safe. And then put something much safer, equally cool on your wrist like a Bamford Casio, right? So nice. this brings up maybe the first watch that we would recommend as one of the top five watches you can wear this summer. That's an amazingly cool watch that gives you a lot of emotional satisfaction as a watch dude, but most likely will not get you robbed. So Jeremiah, take it away, sir. Yeah, so the G-Shock, I think, is the venerable or the most, um, you know, the ultimate tool watch, as many would say, the toughest watch in the world. I think it came out in 1983, the DW56, uh, uh, DW5000C. And I think the first uh, G-Shock and Bamford collaboration was a GW5610, which is a descendant of the original. Right. right. And he's just launched his new collaboration, which is the DW6900, this, this watch. And it's the watch that both broke the internet and kind of unfortunately created a bit of a riot in Carnaby Street, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, there were, I heard there was violence at the, at the install launch. Well, so apparently what happened is, and this is the problem today, is because like, you know, everyone realizes that you can make money on these if you buy them fast and then resell them on the, you know, the secondary market. There was a huge line of people like there was for the moon swatch for this watch. And you know, what George said was as he was going through the line, like all the people in the back, he knew and they knew him they wanted to take pictures but as he got closer to the front he realized there was people who had no idea who he was and were mm. clearly like i guess like gangs of kids yeah. that were sent there to just buy the watches so it's true the rumors are true it's probably I know, organized I, gangs I, I i assume so because no one knew who he was no one there was a watch person right and there was this kind of like this real hostility and aggression that happened and you know uh, you know big kudos to george he handled it perfectly um, he kept everyone calm but eventually you know the police had to come and break out the crowd so he transformed it into a purely online launch um, but that 
that watch is phenomenal. So as you guys know, George Bamford, uh, his colorway is this beautiful, stunning, not Tiffany blue, but Bamford yeah. blue. Right? Yeah, Bamford blue. I think it's a powder or aqua blue. Uh, George, George calls it the triple blue concept. So you have three different kinds of blue, obviously, markings on the case here and on the inside of the strap. So of course, markings, yeah. markings on the dial. And I think if you can see the backlight being activated, that's the last blue right there. So it's an incredible piece. And only 149 pounds. Yeah, I mean, that's the amazing thing about it is that, you know, you take something that is completely utilitarian, that's completely accessible to so many people, but, you know, with the Bamford touch, you make it feel special. And that's exactly. the thing. It's like, you know, for as watch guys, we want to wear something that makes you feel special, right? Right. I mean, even if it's on the more affordable end of the price scale. Absolutely. So, okay, we're going to go from the G-Shock, in particular the Bamford G-Shock, which unfortunately I think are all sold out at the moment, but there'll be a secondary launch of these watches yeah. later um, in, in the year to one of my favorite watches from one of my favorite brands, and that is the Baltic Aquascaf, right? This watch is crazy, dude, wait. This watch is insane, dude. It's 710 euro, it's titanium, it weighs only 55 grams, the case, right? It's got a ceramic bezel, all right? Look at that. And it's just like the perfect diving watch, and is it 300 meters water resistant? Yes, sapphire crystal, dude. screw down case back, screw down crown. Dude, I mean, it's like, this is the thing about Baltic, it's always, always over delivering. And when you uh, meet the guys that are behind the brand, Etienne, Paul, and Clément, these are guys who have so much passion and care so much. So it's 41 mm um, in diameter. Put it but on. The strap is also cool. It's a Tropic yeah. strap. I yes. think from the 1950s, the design. I think Rolex and even Blancpain offered it, you know, in the mid 20th century. You know, it was incredibly popular then. I think it's popular now as well. Incredible. You know, and I just, I love this watch on the wrist. You put it on as one of those watches that you just even forget on because it's so comfortable and it just keeps on delivering whenever you look at it. I think in particular, I love this kind of rough and kind of, kind of like texture for the dial. Yes. Um, it's just, it's a killer, killer watch and it just completely over delivers. And last thing guys, it's like, yes, it's a ceramic bezel, but it's a ceramic bezel that has Lume. luminous dive markers. We love lume here. Dude, and we love <laughs> like dive watches that have ceramic bezels with luminous yeah. dive markers. And they're so, few watches, even the high end, that have that, right? I mean, if you talk about divers from Oris or even Hamilton, I think Oris does a diver date. Yeah. Uh, Hamilton does a frogman, I think. They, uh, these two titanium divers, they're in the four-figure range. Right. So, a Baltic at 710 euros is incredible value. Yeah, I mean, let's not even talk about like a, a Rolex. Yeah, Rolex or an Omega, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's way higher. Which are beautiful watches, incidentally, but then bring you back to that, you know, target-rich exactly. environment. Right? Exactly. Okay, so let's go from that. that to a watch that I know you really like, and that is a collaboration between a really cool brand based in New York called Rowing Blazers and Seiko, in particular the Seiko 5. Yeah. Jeremiah, tell us about that watch. Rowing Blazers is a clothing and lifestyle brand started by Jack uh, Carlson. Uh, Incidentally, he knows uh, Eric Wind. They were in college together. Yeah, in Georgetown, in Georgetown. exactly. Right. And uh, you guys probably know who Eric is, and he was a former Hodinkee contributor. Now he's a watch dealer uh, with his own brand, Wind Vintage. A legendary watch dealer and a great guy. Yeah, cool dude. And Jack, he started, uh, or rather Jack was a coxswain uh, for the rowing team at Georgetown. Uh, and he actually produced a book in 2014, a coffee table book called Rowing Blazers. And that book featured um, just the preppy style that rowers tended to wear in, in these elite uh, colleges. Right. And then he started at his clothing and lifestyle brand named after the book. Yes. Right. And originally, I think Eric helped him to source for some vintage pieces for his store. You know, that kind of fit, that aesthetic, that preppy aesthetic, like the Hoyer Skipper, right? Other Seikos as well. And he's always loved Seikos from his childhood. And he really wanted to co uh, collaborate with Seiko and you know, he finally managed to do it, I think. When was it? 2021? Yeah, last year. Yeah. Uh, and it was, there was three versions of this watch. Um, there was two limited editions. I think one had like a, a checkered kind of like bezel. Yes. Another one had like a zigzag line. Uh, and then there's this one, which has now entered the permanent collection as well. Mm -hmm. It's got this beautiful rainbow bezel, right? And then it's got a second hand that is representative of the pole at the 2000 meter line. Yeah, the uh, finish line <laughs> pose of a regatta. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I just, I, I think it's so much fun as well, you know? And I think that's Jack's like magic. It's like, he's created one of the kind of cool and youngest and most viable urban like kind of preppy brands right right and uh, and, it, and it and it just feels like really contemporary really fresh and, and it's got a great identity to it I'm just gonna put it on my wrist as well so I think the the hack here guys is like the watch comes with a NATO strap and also on a metal bracelet um, and everyone's kind of recommended that you just take it immediately off the bracelet I mean I think it's a value proposition mm -hmm. to include the bracelet with it and put it instead on the NATO strap because it just makes it even more like subdued and more yes. fun right I love the movement in this. It's a Seiko 4R36. 
you know, power reserve about 42 hours and, <coughs> excuse me, it's hacking and manual winding. Uh, I've worked on this movement, incidentally. Really? Yeah, I have. And it, it's just incredibly robust workhorse. Love the magic lever uh, winding system and it's a great watch. The fabulous magic lever automatic yeah. winding system. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to go from there from, to a watch that's made by one of the guys that I love the best in the watch industry, or actually two of the guys, right? And that is uh, uh, Andrea Furlan and Hamad El Mari, and their brand is called Furlan Mari. And when they launched last year, they did the incredible, which was to launch a brand and in the same year win a prize at the Grand Prix de Lingerie in okay. Geneva. Absolutely nuts. And it was for a watch very similar to this. So this is their first uh, execution of their uh, legendary chronograph. This one's the blue colored dial version, so they had several different ones. Uh, they had a, a gray one called Mr. Gray, they had a black dial one, and they had a one that was very beautiful called Havana Salmon as well. Nice. Right? Um, and actually, this is very topical because they've just launched their permanent collection of three watches, two with um, applied brigade numerals, and one that's got this great luminous Roman um, track, right. which is actually inspired by a, um, a steel paddock from um, the book uh, that Aramantana 1463 yeah, exactly right so but this uh, watch is incredible you can see here the famous Tosti Tondi pushers on it right which are inspired by the pushers that were created by the incredible Francois Borgel mm. right um, but it's just got maker. yeah it's got such incredible design to it I mean it's like you know from the moment I set eyes on this watch, I was like, it's perfect. And this blue execution is amazing. So just a note to you guys, I'm going to send this watch to my guy, Mike French, uh, in Texas, who has an incredible company called Red Rabbit. Mm. And he makes some of the most beautiful inked silver and turquoise like jewelry. And he's going to put it onto a silver turquoise bangle. Oh, that's, what, that's what you have on your wrist as yeah, well, so he's, right? Yeah, so he made this um, uh, bracelet for me, right? And if you can imagine like this nice. coming onto like a bracelet with like turquoise stones on it, um, I think it was very popular back in the day. Like I remember like like Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, and guys like that, Robert Redford, yes. like wearing stuff like that, you know. And then the last watch we want to talk about is a watch by a guy named Vincent Bonan. Um, he was a watch collector who decided he wanted to create his own brand, sold his entire watch collection. Oh, did he? And I think wow. he's getting like kind of, you know, good momentum with his brand as well. It started with um, a series of watches that are inspired by the old Marine National diving watches as well. I have to say from a design perspective, they're really lovely. Um, I love the uh, typography. I think they're a really well proportioned. You know, even the bare kind of stainless steel bezel is interesting because it's very unique uh, from the perspective of a dive watch. The only thing that I have as an issue with this watch, right, which I'm sure that Vincent will correct in his future watches, is it's a dive watch. It is 100 meters water resistant, but it's not a screw down crown, mm -hmm. you know? And for me, like a dive watch needs to have a screw down it crown. It has to have right? a screw down case back and screw down crown. Exactly. So Vincent, we love you. We love your watch, but just, you know, one note for future your improvement if you can please make that a screw down crown and we'll like you even more um, and like your watch even more as well but you know in the meantime great uh, made an effort and great watch on the wrist as well he made it in three different versions in a black version a blue version and a brown version this is obviously the blue so there you go there's five watches that you can wear this summer without getting jacked if you have a Richard Mill that's great for you uh, but leave it at home because you don't want to get robbed. You don't want to get tased. You want to don't want to get assaulted. You just you don't want to get killed, wait, dude. <laughs> especially that because you know I just got the uh, like divorce and now like I'm free of that and I'm like this is a, the years where I plan on enjoying myself. You mm. know I got a. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, not the time. Yes, exactly. So, so I especially don't want to get killed. Mm. So anyway, here are five watches that you can wear this summer that are amazing and that will not get you robbed or possibly killed. Thank you very much for joining. Thanks, Wei. Jeremiah, always a pleasure, sir. Guys, is mine. stay safe. Stay safe, guys. Bye.